Hello, you guys. How are you all on this wonderful, great morning for some and this wonderful, great night for others? Uh, welcome to the Davis Ministry. Uh, thank you all. Um, what a great day, great night it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, this message here is going to be entitled, The Click-Up Disease. The Click-Up Disease. This message is going to speak to today's shack-ups, today's hook-ups, link-ups, today's sisterhoods and brotherhoods, clubs. We see that the world is ran by people who like to come together in groups. Um, I believe that one of the, the downfalls of this generation, one of the downfalls of society, will be the fact that they can't come out from among those and be a separate. <laughs> that will be the downfall. Most of what's holding people back today is the fact that they cannot come out from among those who are not going towards the ways of Yah. That, that is where the challenge is. That is where people are suffering, where people are struggling. That's why people can't grow. That's why people can't spiritually mature. Why? Because they can't come out of the world. You see, there is this desire to be accepted by the masses, this desire to be popular, this desire to be liked, to be well loved, to be heard, to be seen, to be noticed, to be prominent, to be everywhere with the I get around mentality. That right there happens to be the downfall of many of the world's population today. See, people can't live individually and walk in the ways and according to the word of the Most High Yah. People can't be set apart. People don't feel like they have an identity unless they are walking and joining hands with those who are like minded. But people's like mindedness and the way they think in groups with their closely linked togetherness has nothing to do with the ways of the Most High Yah. Nothing to do with him. So these hookups, these link ups, these shack ups, these click ups, these brotherhoods, sisterhoods, car clubs, bike clubs. Do you realize that when they come together, they come together and have what you call a worldly fellowship? with those who are like-minded and have only those things in mind of the world. You must ask yourself, why are they truly coming together? A lot of what's holding people together today are what drives and motivates people. In other words, there are conglomerates, there are click-ups, shack-ups, link-ups, clubs, brotherhoods, and sisterhoods who are only in existence and they only hang together based upon their habits, based upon their activities, based upon their hobbies, based upon their addictions. And if these addictions, if these habits, right, if these activities, if these hobbies didn't exist, there wouldn't be a shack up. There wouldn't be a link up. There wouldn't be a bike club, car club. There wouldn't be a fraternity and a sorority. There would not be brotherhoods and sisterhoods. So there is a, that's why I call this message uh, the, the, the click up disease. It's a click up disease. It's a disease where people just can't walk alone. It's a disease that people can't do humanitarian works and charitable works without being seen, without being heard, without representing an organization. 
without there being some title over them. They have to have a title associated with them. They have to walk closely hand in hand with those who really have no depth to them. In other words, there is no deepness to them. They are shallow on the surface because their organization or their click up, their shack up, their link up is only based upon worldly things. Because when they come together because of their bike club and their car club, when they come together in their sisterhood and their brotherhood, what are they talking about? What is their brotherhood, sisterhood, link up, shack up, click up? What is it geared towards? What, what, what are their motives? What are their intentions? What are their agendas? What are their plans? What are their projects? What do they intend to do? How do they intend to help humanity? Now, you can help humanity in two ways. You can help humanity continue to go down this road to the end of this world system, only thinking about the things of this world and how they will be prosperous in this world system. Or you can come together to gain lost souls and lead them to Yahushua HaMashiach. But I guarantee you nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, that these link ups, hook ups, shack ups, and these click ups and these brotherhoods and sisterhoods are not coming together to gather up lost souls for the kingdom of Yah. No, they're coming together because they have Harley Davidsons. And so since all of them are uniform in their bike riding skills and their Harley Davidsons, that's why they have brotherhood. That's why they're called brothers and sisters. And But I guarantee you, if the bike club was to be dismantled, there goes the brotherhood and the sisterhood. If these fraternities and sororities were to go under today or tomorrow, there, there is their brotherhood and sisterhood. Their brotherhood and sisterhood would no longer be in existence, would no longer be prominent. It, they would no longer be a factor because the sisterhood and the brotherhood and their organization went under. So then the brotherhood and the sisterhood went under. I, I need y'all to see that. But no one wants to be alone. No one wants to be, no, no one wants to be set apart. There is this spirit on people where they do not want to dare to be different. They, okay, it's a spirit of coexistence. Let me help you. It's a spirit of tolerance. As long as we have in common the hobbies that we all came together to be brothers and sisters of, it doesn't matter who you believe in. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. Yeah, we came together because we all drive old schools, but you worshiping Buddha, you worshiping Krishna, you on white Jesus, you do yoga, you know, you on the third eye. You a Freemason, you a Delta Sigma Theta, you a Phi Beta Sigma. See, all of these things have nothing to do with the Most High Yah. You understand that? So what motivates these click-ups? What, what is motivating them? It's their worldliness. It's their worldliness. It's their worldly behavior. It's their worldly hobbies. That, that is what's motivating these click-ups. As a matter of fact, if people didn't have the addiction to alcohol and drugs the way they do and they were not like minded in their sexual orientation, many, almost all of these hookups, link ups, shack ups and click ups would be dismantled if it were not for their destructive addictions and habits that they partake in together in their sisterhood and their brotherhood. I guarantee you. Because I, I I would even go as far as to say that if one of them came out of the brotherhood and sisterhood and they wanted to follow Yahushua Mashiach, those who they were in the brotherhood and the sisterhood with would no longer want to be associated with the individual that left to go down the set apart road. That's how you know that these brotherhoods, sisterhoods, these link ups, hook ups, shack ups and click ups absolutely mean nothing. Let's go to first Peter chapter four. Lest I hold you guys too long, because I know this is a late one, but I've been wanting to get this message out. So, so you you need to you need to you know be wary of this spirit of coexistence and tolerance in the world around you. See, be wary when you can't sit down and be set apart. 
Be wary when you can't come out from among them and be yea separate. Be wary. Be wary of these things. And that's why people can't get on fire. That's how you that's why you have families, family gatherings, you have circles of friends, circles of relatives and you have co-workers. None of them can get right. None of them can ever live right. Why? Because they have brotherhoods and sisterhoods that they're closely linked to and they can't come out from among them and be a separate. They can't do it. They can't live right. They can't. Why? Family too big. Family too big. Top guy. Have too many uncles and aunts, too many cousins, too many brothers and sisters. They love their family so much, but the family is lukewarm. Family is entangled in sin. So where one is called out, where y'all could be calling out and choosing one out of the family, the one who is called and chosen or the one who is looked at to be called and chosen, they can't even answer the call because they can't even hear the voice of the Most High Yah because their family is turned up. The voice, the volume of the voices of their families and relatives and friends are turned up. So they can't answer the call of the Most High Yah. They can't. They are so used to being noticed. They are so used to being popular. They are so used to being the life of the party. See? They, they're so used to being the favorites, the, 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 the family's favorite auntie and aunt that they, they can't they can't back away. They can't come out. All right. Uh, first Peter, chapter four. So they can't deny themselves. Why? Because they can't come out from among them and be a separate. And if those who you affiliate with and hang with and are in relation to cannot put themselves to rest meaning they can't put their desires on the back burner, then you won't be able to put your desires on the back burner either. Why? Because those you hang with can't put their desires on the back burner. So that means that everyone is living in accordance to the flesh, but none of them can live in accordance to the set apart spirit. That's just what you're having. So there's this click up disease. That's what, that's what I call this message. It's this disease where people just have to be clicked up. I need my brother. I got to have my sister. I need my friends and I need my brothers. And see, they can't do nothing without them. But it's going to come a day when they're going to have to be without them. You know why? Because the Most High Yah, he has a way of causing a disagreement amongst you and your brothers, you and your sisters. See, Yah has a way of causing a disconnection, a disagreement which blew up and got beyond the both of y'all, all of y'all clicked up together. See, he has a way of taking a small misunderstanding and making it into a full outblown, blown up disagreement to where y'all are fuming at each other. Yeah, you had to realize something. See, y'all has a way of allowing you to go through a fiery trial where those in your brotherhood and sisterhood won't even check on you, won't even call call to check on you to see if you all right. Where they'll be nowhere around to assist you. Why? Because Yah has a way of putting you, getting you in a situation to where all you can hear is him. He has a way of causing you to be like Jonah and the big fish prepared for you. So he has a way of doing that to where no one has access to you. <laughs> you don't even have access to other people. When you try to call other people for their assistance and for their help and for their helping hand, no one answers the phone. No one answers the texts. No one answers the voicemail. Come on, let me help you. There comes a time when 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 your brotherhoods, your sisterhoods and your link ups, shack ups, hook ups and click ups will no longer do it for you. Because you know why? Because they do not have the mind of the Most High Yah. They do not have the desires of the Most High Yah. And so Yah has a way of a Allowing circumstances to get in between you and your brothers and your sisters and your girlfriends and your boys and causing it to just be you and him. Now, let me help you. Y'all, y'all see y'all looking at me kind of funny, but I'm going to get to you tonight. 
See, you got to learn how to be by yourself. You have to learn to enjoy your own company. You have to learn to be able to turn down, sit down, and be in a quietness of just you and the Most High Yah. In the presence of the Most High Yah, you have to learn how to be able to do that. And if you are never able to do that, then you were never able to hear. You will never be able to hear the voice of the Most High Yah. You'll never be, you'll have the voices of everyone around you and you'll be confused thinking it's a higher spiritual being calling you to something, but it will be the voices of all those who have spirits on them calling you their way, calling you to the world, keeping you in the world. And you'll never be able to make a clear distinction between what spirit is calling you, what voice you are hearing. Let me hear you. That's the reason why there comes a time. When you got to sit down, there, there, there comes a time when you got to turn in the player's card. Y'all ain't listening to me tonight. There has to be a time when there ain't no more going out. There's a time. There's a time. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, there, there's a time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not the life of the party no more. There's a time. I can't hang out all night long and get two hours of sleep. Knowing I got to go to work the next day anymore. I, I can't do that. Okay. okay. Y'all ready? The click up disease. Well, I can't give up my relatives. I can't give up my family. I can't give up my friends. I can't come out of my fraternity. I can't come out of my sorority. I can't, I can't do it. I, got, I have to be connected to something. I have to be identified by something. And when you don't know who you are and whose you are, you always need something that you can be identified by. <laughs> There's always have to be a label on you. You have to be titled something. You have to be crowned something. You have to always be among the popular, among the well-known, the well-liked, the outspoken. You always have to be in the midst of something. You can't miss a party for nothing. Can't miss a hookup for nothing, a shack up for nothing, a click up for anything. I can't miss the outing because I, because I, because you know, I have FOMO syndrome. Oh, let me help you. You know what FOMO syndrome is, don't you? Doesn't you? You know what FOMO syndrome is? FOMO is the fear of missing out syndrome. That's what you got. You got FOMO syndrome. So let me help you with that. And because you have FOMO syndrome, you'll never be able to sit home quiet and just hear the voice of the Most High Y'all speaking to you, through you, and for you. You have some things about you that you need rectified, but they can never be rectified because you need your brotherhood. You need your sisterhood. And all of you all in the brotherhood and the sisterhood have issues that ne'er neither one of y'all can help each other out with because they spiritual. And because y'all have demons and unclean spirits on y'all. Y'all, y'all can't help each other out the whole. You all are, you, all of you all are confused. You're all double-minded. You're all confused. You're all addicted to something. You're all traumatized. You understand? You're all prideful. You all need to be, to be stroked. Your egos need to be stroked. You're all narcissists, see? That that's what the problem is. And so you all need to hang together. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. You fly together. Let me help you. And see, you have FOMO syndrome. You, you, you have a fear of missing out on the world, thinking the world is going to pass you by, not even knowing that the world is being destroyed. The world is coming to a close. The world is coming to an end and a shutdown. And you steadily thinking you're going to miss out on something, and which, and really, the only thing you're missing out on is the will of the Most High. That's what you're missing out on. You're missing, oh, let me help you. You're missing out on a true best life in Him. That's what you're missing out on. But because you don't see that you are missing out on him. See, you continue to move about your own way. See? Can't say no to the crowd. No to the cheers. No to the celebrations. Can't say no. Okay. Therefore, y'all ready? First Peter chapter four, verses one. Therefore, since, therefore, since Mashiach suffered, since Messiah suffered, for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. <laughs> For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Mashiach suffered in the flesh. You must arm yourself with the same attitude and suffer in yours. 
Do you know what suffering in the flesh means? That means I can't say yes to everything I want to do. That's suffering in the flesh. Suffering in the flesh means I have to say more. I have to say no more than I say yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have to turn down a lot of invites. You know what I mean? I, I, I have to I have to miss some phone calls. I have to block some phone calls. I have to block some numbers. I have to block some numbers. That's right. I have to disconnect and disassociate myself. I have to fall way back in the shadows. That's what that means. I have to put my interests to the side. Why? Because I must now deny myself of what I used to inordinately engage myself in constantly. That's what this means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, since Mashiach suffered for us in the flesh, he suffered in his flesh so that we may live in the spirit. Come on. He was already filled with the spirit. He already had the spirit. Yahusha was already spiritual. He already was in the spirit. The spirit was already in him, filled up with the spirit. So he didn't have to suffer in the flesh for us. We needed what he had. He didn't need what we had. <laughs> did you hear me? Yahusha did not need what we had. We needed what he had. So in order for us to obtain what he had, what he walked in, what he is comprised of, he, he had to suffer in the flesh for us so that we could get the power that rose him, that raised him from the dead. We needed the same power that raised him from the dead in us so that we could live with him for eternity. See, he didn't need us. We needed him. So that means that because he suffered in his flesh for our cause on our behalf. We need to arm ourselves with the same attitude. In order for you to live with him, then that means that you need to suffer in your flesh. That means sometimes you can't eat. I, sometimes I can't eat. Sometimes I can't have nothing to drink sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't always go shopping. That's why I said there's a whole lot of no's. There's going to be a whole lot of no's in this. And people are going to get offended because of how many times you have to tell them no out of all the years you told them yes. And they don't even know that the same no's that you have to tell them, you're telling yourself no. You see that? Okay, come on, let me go. First Peter chapter four, verses one. Therefore, since Mashiach suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Your mind has to be on suffering in the flesh. Your mind. Now, how can your mind be on suffering, the, suffering in the flesh as Yahushua suffered in his flesh for us? How can our mind be on suffering in the flesh? You have to renew it. You have to constantly renew your mind in Yah's word in order for you to be able to constantly, consistently, persistently suffer in the flesh as Mashiach suffered for us in the flesh so that we may live in the spirit. Arm yourself with the same attitude. See, it says arm yourselves also with the same mind, the same way of thinking. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Once you have suffered in the flesh, once... Uh, once you have suffered in the flesh, you have ceased from sin. Now, that does not suggest that we don't still sin. Why? Because first John chapter one, verses eight says that uh, um, he who says that he is without sin, he deceives himself and the truth is not in us. You see, if we say that we are without sin. Uh, we, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So it, it doesn't mean that we don't sin. That means that we do not have the mind to sin. We don't have the heart to sin, meaning that sin does not rule over our lives. Sin does not dominate us, right? We're not moved by sin does not lead us. That's what that means. So this is while we have ceased from sin. 
Once we have suffered in the flesh, once we have made our minds up that we're going to suffer in the flesh as Yahushua has suffered in the flesh for us, we arm ourselves with the same attitude in mind that Yahushua did in fact suffer in the flesh for us. And all, and so thus we need to suffer in the flesh for him, right? That's the exchange. He suffered in the flesh for him so that we may live. And so now that we can live because we have the set apart spirit, we need to suffer in our flesh for him. Let, let me help you. So that means that we can't say yes to everything. Now, can we? All right. Verse two. Now. So, so uh, first Peter chapter four, verse one, and then two, therefore, since Mashiach suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse two, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of Elohim. That means that you no longer live your life for the will of men in your lust. That means that there comes a time when you're done with the world. You have given the world your gifts, your talents, your skills, and everything that you had to offer to the world. There comes a time when I got to back away from y'all. I have to put y'all to bed now. No, I can't do. I can't do me no more. I can't do us no more. That's what that means. I can't do me no more. I can't do us. Why? Because you have already spent 10, 15, 20, 30 years in the world, partying, turning up, reveling, engaging in sinful behavior, carnality, sensuality. You've already spent years in the ways of the world. You've already spent years in living for Satan. You spent years doing that. Now you need to spend the remainder of the years or the life you have left on this earth living for the will of Yah. That's exactly what this means. So he says, verse two, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men. There was a time when you used to live your life in the flesh for the lust of men. Anything your friends wanted to do, you did it. Everything they wanted to engage in, you engaged in. You see, all of the world's entanglements, you entangled yourself right on into the world's affairs, just like your brotherhood and your sisterhood did. Where there came a time when, guess what? Yeah, they may not have been called out, but you were. You were called out. You were called out. The problem is people are called. You know what the problem is? People are called out, but they are so captivated. And they are so fearful of what lies ahead of them in working and walking for the Most High Yah that they stay right where they are and they never answer the call. Because they feel like they're going to miss out on something. They're going to miss out on the party. They're going to miss out on a banquet. They're going to miss out on a cabaret. They're going to miss out on a concert. They're going to miss out on a festival. They're going to miss out on a fest. A summer fest. They're going to miss out on something so they can never live for the most high Yah. Now, didn't you already spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years doing this? You get what I'm saying? You didn't already, you didn't party for 20 years. When is there going to be a time that the party ends for you? When? When, when, when is that going to happen? Is that ever going to happen? When is there ever going to be a time when there's no more turn up? When? When is there coming a the time? When is there coming a the time that you're going to grow up? Just because you are an adult, that does not mean that you grew up. Let me help you. Don't you know that there are many 16, 17, 18 year olds still hiding in the bodies in 45 to 50 year olds? Don't you know that? You have 45, 50, 60 year olds still trying to rekindle their 20s. That's the reason why people can't grow up and get in the word. They can't get about the father's business because they still about the world. See, yeah, 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 yeah. They got some years on them, but they have not matured. See, they have become adults, but they have not grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They may be adults, but they are still immature spiritually. Okay, it says here. Verse two, that he should, we should, now, he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. 
that he no longer, verse two, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of Elohim. So we no longer live for the world. Now we live for Elohim. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for Elohim. We no longer live for the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the link ups, the click ups and the shack ups and the clubs. We now live for Elohim. That's what that means. Verse three, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime. I need y'all to catch this. Verse three, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, see sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties. How many drinking parties y'all been to? How many drinking parties have we been to? See? And, with a, and, and abominable idolatries. Christmas parties. See, Valentine's Day parties, Halloween parties, New Year, New Year's parties. Come on. Well, what are these abominable idolatries where you used to get drunk, where you attended drinking parties, revelries? That means loud partying, loud talking, loud rapping and singing, profanity coming out of your mouth. See? That's what that means. Didn't you spend? That's why I says, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. We have spent enough in the past. We've spent 10, 15, 20, 30 years in getting drunk every weekend. We didn't spend 10, 20, 30, 40 years getting high every weekend. I mean, isn't that enough? We didn't spent 10, 20, 30, 40 years celebrating pagan holidays. 10, 20, 30, 40 years in this fraternity and sorority. We didn't spend 10, 20, 30, 40 years just merely going to church without reading the word. When we going to study the word? When we going to meditate on the word? When we, come on, y'all. Now, verse four, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. Speaking evil of you, man, when you say you're about to turn your life around, when you say that, you know what, you are renouncing and denouncing your membership to this Greek fraternity and sorority, they look at you like you crazy. They heap abuse on you and they speak evil of you. I thought we were brothers and sisters. I thought we was a club. I thought we was. I thought we were a clique. I thought we were a family. Isn't that what they tell you? We, we are now a family. But now they speak evil of you. Why? Because now they think it's strange that you don't run with them in the same flood of dissipation. They, they looking at you strange like something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you the way you don't smoke five and six, seven, eight blunts with us no more. There's something wrong with you now where you don't drink a whole half gallon every weekend with us no more. There's something wrong with you when you don't come. It's something wrong with you that you don't come to our big drinking parties with orgies anymore. It, it, it's something wrong. And they speak evil of you. You know why? Because you now living in righteous convicts them of their sin or it reminds them. Let me say that it don't convict it, it, yeah, it convicts them, but it reminds them of their sin that they won't let go. So that means that your righteousness and your set apartness threatens them. It makes them feel low. It makes them feel inadequate. See, it makes them feel self-conscious. They're self-conscious. They're self-conscious. They, 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 they feel less than. They feel undermined. They feel rejected. See, they feel less important. That's the reason why you'll oftentimes hear things like, oh, you think you good now. You think you too holy now. You holier than thou now. You think you too good for us. You better. You think you better than me? No, you didn't think I'm better than you. You know I'm better than you. You see, that's why you'll hear that. They speak evil of you now because you want to walk right. You want to live right. Now you want to give Yah the remainder of the 10, 20, 30, 40 years or however many years you have left on this earth to Yah. You didn't get, you had no, you have already given 10, 20, 30, 40 years to the world. Now you want to give the remainder of the 10, 20, 30, 40 or how many other years you have left on this earth to Yah, to do the will of Yah. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? But see, the world has this mentality that 
they still have the world to chase. And when they're done chasing the world, then they will give the remainder of their 10, 20, 30, 40, or however many years they have left to Yah. But then let me serve notice on you. Many of them won't get to see half of those years, not even a sliver of those years. Some of them won't even see a third of those years that they talking about. Because they're going to get judged. The Most High is going to judge them right in their wickedness, in their sin. And there won't be no time to turn around because you didn't already have warnings. You didn't already gotten called out. Do you understand? He didn't gave you chance after chance after chance, time in and time out. And you did not answer. Okay, now judgment in your sin, hell. That's what that means. Verse three, let me go back. Let me say that one again. First Peter chapter four, it's the click up disease. You got to click up. You got to click up all the time. Got to be around folk. Can't come out of the world. Can't come out from among them and be a separate. You can't do it. It's a disease. <laughs> let me help you. Verse three, for we have spent enough. First Peter chapter four, verse three, for we have spent enough of our past 10, 20, 30, 40 years lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, sensuality, See, an inordinate, excessive indulgence in sensuality, carnality, worldliness, lewdness, lusts, orgies, see, see, sex parties too. The se Come on now, drinking parties, what goes on at drinking parties? Sex, <laughs> you, you see, drinking, sex leads right on into it. The drinking, the music, the sex goes right into it. The gambling too. They gamble there too. See, all that goes on. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, loudness. See, talking loud, yelling loud, shouting loud. Drinking parties and abominable idolatries. See, Christmas parties, Halloween parties, New Year's parties, all these types of parties. All right. These hazing activities, you know, where they have where they have these parties for those who have crossed the burning sands in these Greek fraternities and sororities. All right. Meaning they have passed on from darkness to light. They have graduated. They have graduated and elevated in their affiliation to darkness in darkness. Come on, y'all. All right. They have, they have, they have went through the trials and the tribulations of their hazing activities to Satan to now being a full blown member who have went through the ranks and now they have gained fortitude to see that's the crossing the burning sands. Well, let me. OK. OK. Now he says here, listen. Verse four, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you thought they loved you. I thought we were friends to the end. Friends to the end of the world. See? Got each other's names tattooed on our bodies. Friendship rings. Come on, y'all. Let me help you. You know, I'm the godfather to your children. Aren't you the godmother? See, your entanglements and your hookups and your linkups and shackups and your clubs and your clickups was all based on worldliness. It was all based on the things of the world. How do we know? Because the moment you broke off and said, I want to do the will of the most high, Yah, they speak evil of you. That's how you know that your affiliation, your connection was only based on what you used to do. It was only based on the hobbies that you used to partake in. It was only wrapped around the fact that y'all drink together, smoke together, sex together, eat together, go out to restaurants together, bar hop together, go to happy hour together, go to the strip club together, go to cookouts together. Let me help you. And when you got to live like that your whole entire life, you can never go and grow with the most high Yah. You can never do it. All the while claiming God blessing you. An indictment. Okay. What God? The God of this world. Satan. Freemasonry. Yeah, that God. He's blessing you. So it says here, now listen, verse four, first Peter chapter four, verses four again. 
In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you. Verse 5, they will give an account though, but they will give an account. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Which means that, guess what? There's coming a time where their mistreatment of their mistreatment to those who decided that they would want to walk with the Most High Yah, these people who spoke evil of you, they're going to be judged for their harsh mistreatment. They're going to be judged also for the fact that the Most High Yah had given them an opportunity to live for him, but they didn't take it. So they're going to get judged. You had the same opportunity to live right. You didn't take it. But then you decided to speak evil of those who decided to take the chance to live for the most high. To answer the call. To live for the most high. Yeah. You talked about them. You mocked them. You spoke evil of them. But these are the same people you call brother. Same people you call sister. Same people you call bestie. Same people you call family. Same people you said you love to. I see. It was only based on my ignorance. See, it was based on my darkness. You love me because of my darkness. You loved me because I was spiritually incapacitated. You loved me because I knew no better. You loved me because I was ignorant. You loved me because I was foolish. You loved me because I was double-minded, confused, frustrated, and traumatized, still unhealed, can't grow. That's why you loved me. You loved me then because misery loved company. Everything we did was to hide our misery. That's what it was for. That's what the link-ups, the click-ups, the shack-ups, the clubs, and that is what the conglomerates, that is what the brotherhoods and the sisterhoods are for. What are they for? It's to hide misery. It's to hide trauma. It's to hide the fact that we all unhealed together because the only thing that can truly deliver us and free us, liberate us, is the word of the Most High, y'all. So if we ain't doing that, what we doing? He says, listen, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Verse six, for this reason, the good news was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to Elohim in the spirit, meaning that they will be rewarded for their understanding of reality and eternity, even in their state. OK, that's what that means. Remember when Yahushua went, when Yahushua went to preach and minister to the spirits that were locked up. Remember that? that he, he preached, he ministered to the spirits in hell. The ones that were locked up and chained up, those who were reserved for judgment. So they got the good news. And so did those who were dead. So he says, look, for this reason, the good news was preached also to those who were dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to Elohim in the spirit. But this is right here. This is what this right here is getting this. What I'm getting ready to say is getting ready to be the highlight. Verse seven. But the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand, meaning the end of all things is near. All of the buddy systems and the hookups, the link ups, the shack ups, the click ups, all of the brotherhoods, sisterhoods, the clubs. All of these things are coming to an end. Verse seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Now, how is it that you're going to be serious and watchful in your prayers when you can't come out of the club? When you can't come out of the brotherhood and the sisterhood? Huh? How is that? And if people are praying, what are they praying for? What are they praying about? Who are they praying to? 
So you have to consider these things. Well, you know, my brothers and you know, my sisters, they pray. We pray. Well, who are you praying to? What are you praying about? See what I'm saying? What do your prayers consist of? Being as though you can't come out of the world and you can't come out from among them and be yea separate. What are your prayers geared towards? What are the motives of your prayers? What drives your prayers? What are you praying for? Who are you praying to? Why? You see, these things must be answered. These questions must be answered. I got 3% on my pad, my pad about to die. So I'll just hit y'all with these scriptures. I'll just come out. The, I just come off the top. Uh, I believe Matthew chapter seven, verses 13 to 14. Or Matthew chapter seven, verses 13 to 15. One of them, you could pull that scripture up. But the Bible says, enter through the narrow gate, which happens to be one of my favorite scriptures. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and very few will find it. Your click up, your shack up, your link up, your hook up and your car and bike club ain't going down the narrow road. I guarantee it. They all going through the wide gate down the broad road to destruction. They're riding their Harley Davidsons down the road to destruction. <laughs> They're riding their Suzukis and their Hondas all the way down the road to destruction. They're doing the Wizard of Oz skip in their fraternities and sororities down the road to destruction. I'm, I'm just telling you. They are all of their different religions going down the road to destruction because, see, that's what these link ups and these worldly entanglements and click ups are about. They tolerate everybody. They tolerate and they coexist with everybody, no matter what your sexual orientation is, no matter what pagan religion you belong to, no matter what your addiction is, no matter what your habit is. What did they what's there? What is their slogan and moniker for the shack ups, the click ups, the clubs and the brotherhoods and sisterhoods? We don't judge nobody. We just love. See, it's the Satan. It's the end time doctrine of Satan. The don't judge. We don't judge. And we just love. See, that's the coexistence and that's the tolerance among those who are unified in their click ups. And this is the reason why they can't get on fire for the most high. Yah. That's why everything they do is going through the wide gate down the broad road. They will see what you got to realize something. That's the reason why we had to be born again spiritually. You know why? Because we were all born going through the wide gate down the broad road. We were all born into that. Why? Because we were born at, we were born into sin. We were shaped in iniquity and born into sin. See? So because of the, the pattern of Adam, we were all born into sin, meaning we were all going through that wide gate down the broad road when we came out our mother's womb. And that's the reason why we had to be born again spiritually so that we can divert our trajectory from the broad road to the narrow road. See, that's, this is what had to happen. But how can you do that if you're not born again? How can you do that if you don't arm yourself with the same attitude and the same like mind that if Mashiach suffered in his flesh for us, then we need to suffer in our flesh for him. How can we arm ourselves with that same mind, that same attitude and that same way of thinking if we going down the road with everybody else holding hands together? With everybody else. Don just getting just come on now. Just going along to get along. Cause that's what the world is doing. They're just going along to get along. They don't even know why they're going. They just want to get along. <laughs> they don't even know why they're going. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. See, that's what they're doing. Some people don't even know what they don't even know if they're coming or going. Some people don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. They don't even know why they're going. They just going just to get along, to go along, to get along. 
So they are not left out. See, so they don't miss any opportunities of the world. That's the reason why. But the Bible says the end of all things is near, including your life. The end of all things is near, including the system. The end of all things is near, including your club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The end of all things is near, including your click up. Told you it's the it's the end time. I should have named it the end time click up disease. But it's the click. It's the, see, it's the click up disease. That's what this is. The click up disease with FOMO syndrome. Mm, that's a good one. They have the click up disease with the case of FOMO syndrome. Got to walk with somebody. Can't be lonely. Got to be noticed. Got to be heard. Got to have to be affirmed. Have to be validated. I don't know who I am. I don't know who's. I don't know whose I am. I'm lost without you. I'm lost. I'm a nobody. And then when something happened to you, and when you're deceased and something happened to you, now they have to do all these memorials. And now all of a sudden you ride in the car with them and they got to talk to you and pray to you now. See, I see that's what's got to happen. You have to memorialize your your deceased loved ones to where now they have become those that give you superpowers in the world. Now you're operating off of the spirit of your deceased brother and sister that belong to this clique, that belong to this club, that belong to this organization. You see. Not only that. They somehow, without ever giving their lives to the Most High Yah, went to heaven. Let me help you. They spent their whole entire lives living for the will of the Gentiles, but yet they're in heaven. They spent their whole entire lives living in accordance to the world system, but now they're in heaven. They spent their whole lives chasing the club, chasing the bag, engaging, indulging in revelries, drinking parties, orgies, and dissipation, but they're in heaven with the most high. I don't understand it, but see, that's the ideology and the philosophy of those with the click up disease who suffer from FOMO syndrome. They don't realize that the only fear you ought to have of missing out on something is missing out on eternal life. That ought to be your fear. You ought to fear missing out on eternal life. But instead of that, you fear missing out on a football party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you fear missing out. On fight night. Yeah, yeah. You 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 fear missing out on the turn up. You fear missing out on the super fest. You fear missing out on the banquet. I fear you fear it. You fear missing out on the cabaret. I you just fear missing out. And so because of that. You don't even see that your salvation is hanging in the balance. Salvation just a hanging in the balance. You have to be ready to come out from among them and be a separate. That doesn't mean that you don't love folk. That just means that. We are going in two separate directions. That's what that means. Now, at any given time, you can come with me. But individually, we are responsible for our own salvation. But you don't have to go the way you're going. Now, we really, now that if we are really close, if we are really brothers and sisters and family, like you said, then why not? Why not we experience a new journey together? Do you, you hear me? See, we were closely linked, 
we were in this club. We were in this brotherhood, sisterhood. We clicked up over here going towards the world. Well, why can't we now click up, link up? Why can't we now hook up? Why can't we now be brotherhood and sisterhood going down the way of the most high? You see, but see, it, the road is narrow. So everybody's not going to go. Everyone's not going to go. See? Everyone is not within the spiritual range to receive information from the spirit realm where the most high Yah is present. Everyone's not in his range. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain range that you have to be in, you see, and you have to be tuned in. That's why, that's why Yahusha says that, listen, no one, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. So see, you must be drawn to him. You must be drawn. Otherwise, you're not going to go. You're going to be drawn to the world and drawn to everything around you. Everybody around you, every pagan practice and every abominable idolatry, every revelry, every drinking party, every orgy, everything around you, you're going to be drawn to. But the most high, you won't be drawn to him. You'll be drawn away from him. Because the world keep calling you. And because you have not armed yourself with the same attitude as Mashiach how, and how he suffered in his flesh for you, you won't have the same attitude and the same like-mindedness to arm yourself with the attitude that you must now suffer in the flesh and live for him. That won't be your attitude. That will not be your mindset. You won't even be thinking about that. That will be far from your way of thinking. That won't even be your attitude. Your attitude will be to feast instead of fast. Your attitude will be to consume instead of saying, you know what? Let me back away. Let me fall back. Let me turn down. Let me decrease. Let me let me be on the decline as it relates to what I want all the time. You won't have that mentality. And, and, and that's the reason why some people are deceived today into thinking that they will be accepted by the Most High Yah for their lukewarmness when the whole time Yah was calling them forward, but they just, they kept resisting. They kept resisting. They kept saying, no, not right now, God. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the new car. Thank you for the new job. Thank you for a good doctor's report, but I, I, not right now. I still have some more sex to have. I still have some more shacking up to do. I still have some more fornicating to do. I still have more of the bag and more of the coins to chase. Come on. I still have people to appease to. I still have people that need to validate me and affirm me. I still have this organization to join. See, people think that they are going to give the beat up Parts and the remainders and the crumbs of their lives to the Most High Yah, and then they automatically gonna make it in. They don't understand that it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. You might not have that moment. You might not have that opportunity. See, everyone does not have that. Everyone does not get that opportunity. To be able to give their lives to the Most High Yah after they didn't spent majority of their lives living it for the world. Many people don't have that opportunity. Some people die right in their sin and that'd be the end. They didn't have time to change. They didn't have time to repent. They didn't have time to walk right. They didn't have time to pray that one last prayer. They didn't have time to do what was right. They didn't have time to pray for the mercy of the Most High Yah and his grace over their lives. People didn't have that time to make amends. They, people didn't have that time to heal from their trauma and their past. Many people didn't have that. Many people won't have that opportunity. You see?
I'm about to give y'all this here. Listen. Proverbs 29, verses 1. Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Look at how many people are being stiff-necked after Yah has given them many rebukes. There's going to come a time where destruction. Ain't no more chances because you didn't had so many chances. You know? You know how many times you were saved and rescued from near fatal car accidents, skirmishes with death? You know how many times? You know how many times he bestowed his mercy on you? You know how many times he made it so that you did not face jail time, penitentiary chances? penitentiary time you know how many times you got probation when you should have got 25 to life come on you know how many times you kept rent you, you know how many times you were rescued from hanging with the wrong people you kept going back to the same people kept going back to the same hood Going back to the same block, going back to the same corner, same dope stroll, going back to the same club, going back to the same establishments. And and you and you got out all the time. You came out all the time. Y'all delivered you, rescued you all the time. And you kept going back. See. So there comes a time, there comes a day when you do not heed the correction and the rebuke of the Most High Yah because of your stiff neckness. There comes a time when, guess what? Time is run out on you and you are suddenly destroyed without remedy, meaning there's nothing at this point that can cure you from your click up disease. <laughs> there's nothing that can cure you from your FOMO syndrome. You done. It's over. And now all of a sudden we need to do GoFundMes and we need to do fish fries and barbecues and we need to get t-shirts made and we need to go to the funeral and we need to, you know, hope that the preacher preaches your deceased loved one into funeral heaven and uh, come on. We all leaving out there talking about they didn't gain their wings and we going to pour out some liquor for them and they pouring out one for us in heaven and happy heavenly birthday. And all. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. See, the time to talk about heaven was when you was here. All of a sudden now, heaven. I've never heard a time where heaven comes out of people's mouths more than when somebody deceased, where somebody deceases. You never hear heaven come out of no one's mouth until their loved ones decease. They Heaven, 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 happily heavenly birthday, happy heavenly birthday. They gained their wings and everybody talking about angels and wings and everybody's talking about heaven and <laughs> you understand that whole time you was here you ain't never said nothing about heaven whole time you was living whole time you was living you never talked about angels whole time you was living whole time You guys, that, that's it. That's it. Don't be infected with the click up disease. Don't be infected with that. Learn how to say no. Learn how to say, been there, done that. Learn how to say, learn how to acknowledge it's over. It's over. It's over. Now your flesh ain't going to tell you it's over. 
Your flesh not going to tell you that. Your flesh is going to continue to want you to go in accordance to its desires. Yes, I will be putting this on the tube. Yes. Yes, Sister Tamar. Yes. Uh, you know, it, I mean, listen. People, are, I mean, you got to realize that this is not a time to play. Judgment is on the land. Is over the land. And we're all just sitting on the edge of our seats waiting for the day we receive that dreaded phone call. Because that's, that's where we are now. That's where we are. Hate to say it like that. Hate to be so, so blunt and so brash, but it just is what it is. It is what it is. Who's next? That's the only thing I keep thinking about. Okay, who's next? It might be me next. See, I don't, you see, but at least if I'm next, I want to be living right. I want to be caught living right. I don't want to be caught in some unrepentant sin. You understand? I don't want to be caught with my heart undone. So I don't want to be caught. And that's the, and that's the thing. See, the difference between those of us who are walking with Yah and acknowledge him and walking set apart and those who are not, we're just saying that, guess what? We're always wrong and Yah's word is always right. That is the only difference between those of us who desire to walk with Yah and realize that he's the only way versus those who want to go about their own way. The big difference, the big, distinct, unique difference between those of us who are wheat and those who are tares is the fact that, guess what? No matter what the situation is, when we put our lives right alongside y'all's word, we wrong. He's right. See? No matter how much I, no matter how much I think that that's good and I did good and they're good and no, no, some that's not right. That needs to change. It's admitting your flaws, your faults, and your imperfections because of this flesh. Admitting that. You know, y'all's word. His word is the mirror so that you can see yourself in it and correct some things, get some things corrected and rectified. His word is the plumb line, meaning his word is, is, is the barometer. His, his word is the goal, right? His, his word is the measuring stick. You know, it's, it's by grace through faith that you are, it's by grace through faith that you are saved, but yet there still must be a work that must be done in accordance to your faith. That, that you see, it's working out your faith, that's all, but your faith is still in front of your works. So your works is how you live. Your works is displaying the fruits of the spirit. That's your work. That's the work right there. Displaying the fruits of the spirit. Obedience. So if y'all are saying do something. Well, that's your work. If he's telling you, you need, I, I want you to do this. This is what you, this is what I need you to do. This is what I want you to do. That's your work. Now, because you have faith in him, you're going to work. You're going to do what he asks you to do, right? You're going to obey him because of your faith. Now, there may, there may have been times, there, there may be a time that you might not do what he say do. 
And that's the reason why you repent. So that when he brings it up again, you don't keep falling in that area. You see, you respond in obedience because of the conviction that he allowed you to feel and allowed you to acknowledge and you repent and do what he says do, obey. And if you're truly born again, it ain't going to be so many times you're going to disobey. You know why? Because the conviction is going to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you're not going to want, you're not going to, you're not going to want to continue to, to displease the most high Yah. Not if you in the word, not if you in the word, not if you, that's the reason why it's important that you come out from among them and be a separate and come out of the ways of the world and be in the world. Why? Because that's what. Keeps your sensitivity. That's how your sensitivity to the word of the most high Yah in his presence stays intact. You want to be sensitive to him. See, the closer you are to Yah, the more sensitive you are of him. Think about it. The further you are from Yah, the less sensitive you become. You become desensitized because of how far you are from the most high Yah. So the closer you are to the most high Yah, the more sensitive you will be. So in order to keep that sensitivity to the set apart spirit and the things of y'all, you need to be in him. See? And if you're in him, when you do sin, you'll be convicted. You know. Your sensitivity to his voice will continue to be there. Your sensitivity to his correction, to his conviction will be there. And you'll respond to it accordingly. See, instead of saying, oh, well, you know, it ain't no big deal. Ain't no use in doing this. Why we got to do this? Everybody else living the way they living and they going to heaven. They got grace. And then that does not that does not be the truth. You be deceived because you think everybody's under grace just because they say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm highly blessed and favored. You think they all under grace and they living how they live. And you are duplicating your life based upon theirs. And you walking the way they walking and you don't even know all y'all deceived <laughs> you see ain't nobody doing what the most high y'all saying do and there's some things that the most high y'all is telling you to do and there's some things he's telling you don't do you have to be able to discern both because that's your relationship with him and trust me, he's not going to be telling you to do what someone else is doing or not do what someone else is not doing. No, he's going you're going to have a unique relationship with him. That's the reason why it's important that you quiet yourself down, quiet your spirit, quiet your environment so that you can hear what he's saying, because everyone is not in the same season. You see, everyone is not in the same season. You have to know when your season is up with certain people, with people, places, and things. There comes a time when your season is up with people, places, and things. And because many can't discern what season they're in, they continue down the same yellow brick road merrily 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 life is but a dream that's that's what they and then they, they never hear the bells go off they never hear the trumpets being blown they never they never heed to the correction of the most high yah they never hear the warning signs they never see the warning signs they just keep on going That's what they do. Just keep on going without stopping. High speed. Living on the edge. Putting Yah to the test. Putting Yah to the test. Taking his grace and mercy and love too far. That's what they, that's what people do. See, what people... You have to realize we live in an age now where what people call faith 
is really them being daredevils and living on the edge. Kind of almost like, just like almost like when Satan told Yahushua, he said, all you have to do is throw yourself down and won't the angels pick you up so that you won't dash your foot up against the stone. Remember that? See that, see that right there is now, 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 when people throw themselves down, that, 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 see, that's because Satan coaxed them. Satan tricked them. Satan gave them the, the illusion that what they were doing by throwing themselves down was faith. But really it was, it was testing the most high, it was putting the most high out to the test. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. See, this is the type of stuff that people are doing. And guess what? When they throw themselves down thinking that the angels will catch them, ain't nobody there. Woo! Boom! Ain't nobody catch them. Judgment. See, wasn't no angels. Why? Don't test the most high like that. Especially after you done been given many chances. And this is where people are deceived because they think that because they have been given millions of chances, a hundred chances, they think that that gives them the license to continue to do what they've been doing. The same thing they've been doing. And to do what? And and to go to larger extremes. And to the most high side, to the most high y'all says, you know what? I'm done. I I ain't nah. Nah, this is it right here. Most high says, nope, they done. They done. They keep on testing me. This was the last straw right here. So. Yeah. So still you don't, don't be testing the most high. Don't put them to the test like that. Meaning you better be humble and modest in your dealings. Understand your limitations and your mortality. <laughs> You better, you better take into consideration that you are feeble. You are impotent. You're like chaff. You're like chaff blown in the wind. Don't think, don't get, don't, don't, don't get beside yourself and get cute. And then just, and thank you got it like that. And thank the reason why you keep on surviving is because you built like that and you strong and you built for it tough. The Most High Yah will allow you to throw yourself down and the angels won't be there to catch you. That's why Yahusha had to tell Satan, guess what? He also do not test the Most High. Don't put him to the test. Because then you have a lot of people out of here. You have a lot of people out here whom Satan is speaking in their lives, speaking in their ears, saying, you good. You can do that. The most high got you. You scared? Come on now. Didn't he get you before? Didn't he save you? And what they do, they listen to Satan. You know what? You right. Don't even, they don't, they don't read the word. They don't pray. They don't do nothing. And they just jump, leap, hop, skip, boom. Judgment. <laughs> That's what's happening. And a lot of it, a lot of it be, guess what? Initiation. Initiation processes. They try to show how much fortitude. They try to show how tenacious they are. By doing the most extreme things to prove to people that they got it like that. They built like them. Trying to prove to people how much they belong in their clique, in their club. Man, this stuff is crazy. How much I do belong in your organization. I belong in your brotherhood, sisterhood. And to prove it to you, I'm willing to put the most high y'all to the test. Just to belong in this clique. Because, you know, you know, you know, you know, I need y'all support. I need to get close to the opportunities of the world. I have a higher rate and a higher chance of success and achievements if I get with y'all. So I don't want to miss out on that. So I'm willing to do 
anything to show y'all I'm just like y'all. And that's the downfall of the world. The downfall of humanity is the fact that they always want to prove to the world that they are just like them. It's so bad now that even the church is like that. The assembly is like that. They are so they are so wanting to be loved by the world that they will go lengths to prove to the world that guess what? We ain't that saved. We we just like y'all. Now we ain't that that we do. We ain't that saved. We ain't saved. Save. You know we we you know we 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 still we still in the world too. And so you find people compromising their walk with the Most High Yah just to show the world that they just like them. And bam, judgment. Let me help you. See, that's what's wrong with you. You shouldn't have did that because it costed you because you knew better. Or at least you should have. Should have known better than to do that. Tell you, you can never convert the world by showing the world Proving to the world you can be just like them or that you have not changed. You will never be able to convert the world by going out into the world and showing them that you just like them and you understand their plight and you understand their problems. You can't don't do that. Now you ought to preach, give them the word. Bam. I'm not, I don't need to do nothing with you. I don't need to do nothing with you. No, we don't need to become friends. You understand? We don't need to be buddies. We don't need to be best buddies. We don't need to be on the buddy system. We don't, no, we don't need to do none of that. We don't need to do that. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I love you. I mean, but I'm not, we don't, we, we going in two different directions. I'm in another. I'm in one season. You in another. You going in one direction. I'm going in another. We see. So ain't, ain't no sense in me trying to prove to you that that, you know, I'm just like you. No, don't you do that. Because guess what? Their judgment is ready to be unleashed upon them. The moment you show them in the world that you just like them, you'll catch the judgment. That you didn't even know was over the people you tried to prove to you were just like. You, you didn't even know judgment was coming. And now you got judged right along with them. Just because you decided to show out. To gain their allegiance. To gain their credibility. To gain their acceptance. You proved that you were a fool. Because you went out there. Outside of the will of the Most High Yah. Thinking. That you was able to go out there and prove to them you were just like them in order to convert them over. And it doesn't happen like that. Y'all get that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The click up disease. <laughs> the click up disease. And the only way that you could be cured from that is to be delivered. You need to be delivered. You need to be healed. You need to be delivered and healed from that. I'm telling you, people hadn't healed. So that's why they need. All these coping mechanisms and all these people that validate them, affirm them, that, you know, make them feel special. They need that support system. Who engage in the same destructive, sinful activities that they do. That's where they have a common ground. That's where they agree. Like Amos 3.3 says, can two walk together except they agree? So they agree with each other. And that's why they walk with each other. You know, you know, and, 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 and ways, ways that you can heal from past traumas and bullying and being and, and feeling inadequate and low self-esteem and low self-confidence. The way you can heal from that is to read the word. You have to get into the word of the most high. Yah, but then you also must cut off certain sources. 
You must cut off sources of pleasure and entertainment. You must cut these things off because they give you images and pictures and they promote to you a lifestyle that you may develop a taste for and may make you feel inadequate and depressed because you don't meet up to match up and you don't meet up to the standards of what's being shown to you. And so somehow you think that your life has no value and no worth to it because you don't live like what you see on TV or you don't live like what you hear in the music. And so there, and, and, and you still, and you have friends who are living like the world, still chasing the world and they make you feel like you don't measure up. You don't match up. You don't meet their requirements and standards and still make you feel like you need to do more to gain their acceptance. See, you, that's, and, and in order to heal from that, you must you must quiet your spirit, meaning you need to shut that voice off in you that's telling you you're not enough. You'll never, you'll never measure up. These people are better than you. You'll never amount to anything. Why me? You see, you have the why me syndrome all the time. Why me? I, little old me. Why did it have to be me? Why I couldn't be somebody else? See, you, you see, you have to, you, you have to get over that. You have to learn how to, how to understand that the reason why things have happened to you is not only because the most high Yah is in charge, but then you have to take accountability because there are certain things that guess what the most high Yah didn't do. You chose that. And the most high Yah, he let you do what you did. And you did what you did. He allowed you to do what you did. Now you are feeling the ill effects and the consequences from your decisions. And now you need to repent from that. You understand? And the only way that you can get that is quiet time. You need to quiet the spirit down and allow y'all to talk to you. Allow his spirit to talk to you by quieting yours down. Because yours is what's been getting you in trouble all this time. You got to learn how to shut off the noise. Because there won't be nothing but Satan talking to you anyway. Trying to, trying to further discourage you. Trying to make you feel inadequate. Trying to make you feel miserable. Reminding you of your failures. Bringing up old girlfriends and shack ups, hook ups and old one one night stands. And see, he's bringing up all these people and all of these experiences in your life that did nothing but create the trauma or help create the trauma, help create the resentment. And you need to heal from that by now tuning into and consuming what Yah says about your life. It's mighty funny how we all have these emotional and these psychological problems and issues, but the word of the Most High Yah is the last source that we go to. And that's the reason why we fumble around trying to find things and we don't find nothing. We come up empty every time. And at the onset of what we stumble into or stumble across, they may have some good, they may have some good some some feel good and some euphoria, some euphoric feel good effects to what we stumble across only to find that they leave us empty in the end. It gave us only a false illusion. Do you understand? It gave you a quick fix, short term pleasure. It was only a band aid to the real issue. Healing is beyond skin deep. It's beyond, it's beyond the surface. Healing is beyond the surface. Healing is deep. Healing is deep rooted. And when you refuse to go deep down and get to the foundation and dig deep down into the roots, when you fail to do that, you will always be working on the surface. See, and you'll find some temporary, you'll find some temporary relief. But guess what? After that temporary relief is gone. The pain is still there and it's amplified. Ever notice that? Have you ever had a toothache? You had this big, deep cavity. Almost to the point of an abscess. Come on. You didn't take in all the Tylenols, the Advils. You didn't even put some over gel on there. It gave you temporary relief. But guess what? When all of these products, 
when 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 these pain when these temporary pain relievers wore off, the pain was exacerbated. You know why? Because all you did was mask the symptoms. That's all you did. All you did was treat the symptoms, but you didn't get down to the root of the problem. The problem is you need that tooth extracted or you needed root canal or you need something, you see, or you or or you need an implant or you need you need something done to it. You need to get the infection out. That's the reason why they have to pull that nerve out. Because that's what's hurting. It's the nerve that's affected. You have an infection in the nerve of the tooth, but you keep putting aura gel on it. Now you're messing your kidneys and your liver up because you keep taking Tylenols and that ain't didn't see what I'm saying. But the one thing you scared of doing is going to the dentist so they can go ahead and put that needle in your mouth, which will be temporary pain for the long term effect of your healing. People scared of the needle. That's what's wrong with them. No, you need the needle at this point. But look at what you did to get you to the point of the needle. You wouldn't need, you wouldn't have needed the needle had you not eaten all these sweets, had you not drank all these Cokes, eaten all this candy. But now, look, you created a problem. You see, mankind is famous and known for creating problems for himself, but he's skipping and he's overriding and he's tr he's rejecting the real solution. Isn't that something? We create our own problems, but we don't want the real solution. We want temporary stuff. We want things that have no real effect. We want things that's going to only make us feel good for the moment but have no real impact. That's what we want. When you need somebody to tell you like it is, you need that needle. You need somebody to tell you, no, you wrong. You need somebody to tell you, boy, you need to heal. Stop smoking all. Stop smoking that weed. You're drinking too much. You're fornicating. Come out of them girls' beds and get focused. You need to be married first. See, we need somebody to tell us that. The needle. It hurts. So we bypass that looking for other solutions to the problem that we created and it never works. See, that's what we want to do. Come on. You got a problem. Deep rooted, right? Shack ups, hook ups, link ups, clubs, brotherhoods, sisterhoods, clicks. That's what we get. It reminds me of. The scripture that says in the last days, people will heap up a multitude of teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. And that's what these clicks are for is to have people around you that will that will enable you. See, that will support you in your destruction, that will tell you everything you want to hear. And even if they do give you advice. It, will, it won't be the word of the Most High Yah. They'll give you the author to some self-help book. They'll lead you, you know, to a yoga instructor. They'll tell you to get into the third eye. Notice. And these people are so blind. They're just so happy that they had their brother and their sister to give them sound advice. No, it's not sound if it's not according to the word of the Most High Yah. That's another thing. See, that's how people are deceived. I don't care what they tell you. If it's not according to what the word says, it's not real advice. It's not the truth. They're giving you worldly solutions and worldly advice that may have the appearance at the onset of the advice that is working if you take it. But then you're going to get in that thing and see that this advice right here, this don't work. You got a placebo. That's what you got. You didn't get the real thing. Yeah. That's what we want. We want placebos. We don't want the real pill. That we don't want that. We don't want the cure. That's we don't that's what we don't want. We don't want the cure. We don't want that. Place give me placebo. Just give me the the illusion I'm getting healed. That's all. Just give me something make me feel like I'm doing something. 
And so you live your whole entire life chasing the world, chasing people. Have you ever ran into a person? Have you ever known a person that every time you turn around, you see him with a different person? Whether it be another girlfriend, another boyfriend, another friend they met. They just met another friend. <laughs> Let me help you. They just met another friend. Have you ever known these type of people? Every time you turn around, they got somebody new in their life. And they be and that's my best friend. That's your best. That's how's that your best friend, man? You just met him. And what these people won't tell you is that they done ran away all the other people they had. Why? Why? They were codependent. That's why. They were toxic and they done ran away every one they had. And so they have to keep running through people. They have to keep running through people and running over people. You get, come on, y'all. They run through people and run over people to run through people to run over people. And that's why they ain't never, they run people out of their lives till they ain't got nobody to run through and run over. And then they sit down with that same sad sob story they've been having. You know, don't nobody love me and they didn't help me and they did this to me and they left me. And no, no, they didn't do that. You just can't heal. That's what's wrong with you. And you running people away because they find out that, wait a minute, you ain't going to drain me. I'm dealing with some stuff, too. I thought we could help one another. But it seemed like, you know, I'm giving you more love. I'm giving more than I'm receiving. Something ain't right. We're supposed to be, you know, giving and receiving, give and take, right? Brotherhood, sisterhood. No, I don't be like that. See, so it come a time. When the most high Yah is all you got. He's all you ever had. You just didn't realize it till you lost it all. You had to lose everything and fall flat on your behind, fall flat on your face in order for you to see that the most high Yah was all you had to follow. He was the one that was always there from the beginning. It was Satan deceiving you, making you think you had all these people, making you think you had to do all of these weird, foolish things in order to be a part of these people. Making you think that these people were really going to be there. Each and every last one of them was going to be there for you in the midst of your crisis. Or your crises. When they're just some things, everybody's not going to be there for. But you couldn't miss a birthday party. You couldn't miss a baby shower. You couldn't miss somebody's funeral, somebody's wake. You couldn't miss a graduation. You couldn't miss a Christmas party. You couldn't miss a prom. You couldn't miss a... Come on. And now here you going through the worst time in your life ever. And ain't none of them people that you attended their affairs were there for you. Well, don't you know that that's the most high y'all doing that? But then guess who you blame? You blame your friends. And you know what you think you need to do after you done blamed your friends for not being there in the midst of your chaotic situation? You go get new friends. And then once you see that your new friends are just as bad or worse than your old friends, you go get more friends and you still stay in the same jacked up condition. The click up disease. That's what you got. The click up disease. And some people will be blessed enough to have to go through these experiences in order for the most high Yah to work in their lives. Some people are going to be blessed to fall on their face or fall on their behind in order to see the most high. Some people won't have that opportunity. Some people are going to fall out flat and be deceased. In their sin with no chance, no opportunity. I'm telling you now, this is, this is get serious. So I've gotten, you know, I, you know, uh, you know, um, and, and listen, y'all, you know, I had my days and my moments. That's why you lean on the most high. That's why you, you allow his word to rejuvenate you. You know, you talking to a person I was teased all my life. They teased me, joned on me. There was not a nice girl to me in school. 
The girls were not nice to me. And you know why? It was because of how I looked. It was because I wasn't popular. That's why. See, you didn't have to do anything to anybody in order for people to be mean to you. It's just who you are. Not even knowing that way back then, the Most High Yah had his hand over me. He didn't want me to be popular. He didn't want me to be accepted. He didn't want me to be affirmed. He didn't want me to be validated. And now here I am today. You understand? So now I don't feel like I need the people's love and I need to be liked and I need to be popular. I don't feel that way. See? Don't feel, I don't feel that way. It was him saying, I didn't want you to be popular according to the status of this world because you might not you might not be working for me now. You might not have followed my lead. You might still be so connected and so attached to the world that you can't let them go. So I ain't want you to be liked. I ain't want you to be popular. I wanted people to hate you for no reason. I wanted you to be teased. I wanted you to feel, I wanted you to feel how my son felt when he was on the stake. When they spit on him, when they mocked him, when they put the crown of thorns on his head, when they tried to, when they put a sponge of vinegar up to his mouth and made him drink it. Let me help you. When he had to carry his steak, carry your steak, carry your stuff. That's what that means to deny yourself. Deny yourself, pick up your state and follow Mashiach. That's right. Your state. What's your state? So you walking with everything that you need to crucify. You walking, you walking with that stake because you have things in you that need to be nailed to it. You have to constantly, you have to nail your past, nail your trauma, nail your, nail your hangups to the stake. Nail your inadequacies to the stake. Nail your failures and your fear and your doubts to the stake. See, that's what this means. Funny how we spend all our lives convincing the world that we're just like them when the whole time we different. And that's the reason why out of all the years we spent convincing the world that we were just like them, the more they persecuted us, the more they teased us, the more they mocked us, the more they rejected us, the more they hated us, the more they spent all, you understand. That's why you weren't supposed to be with them like them. They knew something wasn't right about you. They knew you didn't belong with them. They didn't knew exactly. They didn't know exactly what it was, but they knew that you didn't belong with them. That's the reason why every time you tried to get close to them, they made you feel less, less than worthy. See, and now you're living in a time now where. You can't even give what's sacred to dogs. Nor toss, nor, nor, nor toss your pearls, nor cast your pearls to swine. You know why? Because they'll just trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Now you're finding yourself have to finding yourself having to withdraw. Why? Because speaking to fools, they will scorn the wisdom of your words. 
So you can't give them all of your Jews. You can't give them your wisdom and your Jews because they, they don't know how to accept it. They don't know how to receive it. All they know is how to receive worldliness. That's all they know how to receive. They can't receive nothing else outside of it. You know? Mm-hmm. So you, you guys, you, you know, this is, I, that's why I spend so much time. It's, it's, I'm done. I'm done. I got to go. Got to go. This was a late one. And so, uh, got to drill it. Got to drill this home. Got to drill this home. So you guys, that's it. All right. Don't be plagued. Don't be infected. With the click up disease and the FOMO syndrome. You'll be all right. The most high y'all got you. He'll comfort you. He'll reassure you. He'll validate you. He'll affirm you. You're safe in his hands. Everything will be all right. You're more than a conqueror in him. That's why he said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on. See, all these are the reassurances. That's why you got to know the word for yourself. That's why you got to know the word. See, because these are scriptures that will come up to comfort you. And sometimes social media can be a danger. Social media can remind you of the things that you were spending your whole life trying to forget, social media will bring them right back up. That's what social media is there for. To bring up old friends, old, I mean, you know, relatives, and old music, old movies, things you were trying to forget. Things you had forgotten till you kept scrolling and you scrolled into some pain. You scrolled into a trigger. Let me, did that, that let me help you. See? You done scrolled yourself into a trigger. And that and took you back 10 years. That's how it happened. Opened them old wounds up from your childhood. Because you kept scrolling. And scrolled yourself right on into a trigger. <laughs> Ain't that? That's how it be happening. And now you're self pitying, self loathing, because you can't get over. You guys, hallelujah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you on this great morning, on this great night. For some, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your power, your presence. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your strength. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you for the comforting of your word, the power of your word, the healing and deliverance effects of your word, Father. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like you. There's no one like you. There's nothing like your word, Father. We just thank you for the opportunity of just being in front of you, being in your presence, Father. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the body of Mashiach and the Davis ministry family. We thank you for all those who came on to tune in for the first time tonight, Father. Thank you for these individuals. Thank you for these brethren. Thank you for these souls, Father. Father, we we thank you for your peace, your protection, and your provision over our lives. We just thank you, Father, for clothing us in our right frame of minds and giving us the activity of our limbs. Father, we thank you for a roof over our head, clothes on our back, food on our table, in a world, in a system, 
in 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 this in this in this space in this world where people all over are suffering some people don't have a roof over their head some people don't have food to eat some people don't even have clothes nor shoes and so father we ask that you would continue to compel the hearts of the body of mashiach to lend a helping hand to those who are less fortunate than we are father we just thank you father we we just thank you, Father, that you have brought us from a mighty long way from where we used to be to where we are today. And we know that we still have some ways to go, Father, but we thank you that we aren't who we used to be and where we used to be, Father, and we are here today. Uh, Father, we uh, thank you for the Davis Ministry family. Uh, Father, we ask that you would continue to bless them. Um, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold times over in all areas and their aspects, in every aspects of their lives. Father, we thank you, Father, for compelling their hearts to sustain, support, and contribute to the Davis ministry, Father, with their monetary gifts and their offerings, Father. Father, we just also thank you for their encouragement, their prayers, their support, and their love. And also, again, their fellowship week in and week out. Father, we ask that you would give us daily wisdom, daily wisdom, discernment, and favor. Allow us to be able to continue to hear your voice, Father. Strengthen us up in our faith, Father. Strengthen us up in our prayer lives, Father, that we are always in connection with you, that we can hear your voice, that we are sensitive to your voice, sensitive to your correction, sensitive to your conviction. Father, we, 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 we want to please you. Father, we so we need you all the time. Father, we ask that you would keep us on fire for your word and cold for the world, Father, that you would increase in our lives as we decrease. Father, we ask tonight that you would comfort some woman, some man, some boy, some girl, that you would comfort them in their in their minds and in their hearts. There are a lot of people suffering because they have the click up disease. They can't come away from people. They can't come out from among the world and be separate because they are afraid that they will be rejected. It. They are afraid that they will miss out on the world. They are afraid that they may be teased, that they may be mocked. They are afraid that they may be persecuted, Father. May you clothe them, Father, with your love and your compassion, and may you fill their hearts with boldness, Father, that they are able to repent, that they are compelled to repent. Some man, woman, some boy, some girl, they would turn from their ways, and they would turn to you, turn to your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, and that they they would repent, that they would confess their sins, profess their belief in your only begotten son, Yahushua HaMashiach, and that they may be reconciled back to you and that they may spend the remainder of their years here on this earth with a relationship, in a relationship with you, Father. We, we just thank you. Tonight, Father, we, we ask that you would forgive us for our sins, past, present, and future, knowingly and unknowingly, and our thoughts, our words, and most certainly our deeds. Father, we, we thank you for what you've already done for us. All the years that you've protected us, all of the tumultuous situations you have delivered us from, you know, you have rescued us from all of our bad decisions, things that we have done on our own that should have led us to a place where there was no return. But Father, you had other plans for us. And so we thank you. So Father, we just thank you, Father, for what you are currently presently doing in our lives and for what we know you will most certainly do in our lives in the future by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, if it is indeed in your will. It is in all of these blessings that we do ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray, and we most certainly give you the highest utmost praise, and we do gratefully say, Hallelujah. 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 I know this is a late, I mean, this is an early morning, late night for some, early morning for some, late night for some. Uh, this message was on my heart. This message was on my heart yesterday. And I said I wanted to get this out. It's like sometimes, even though it be late, when I if I have the time, when it's late, you know, I say, man, I got to get it out. You know how Jeremiah said his his word is like a fire shut up in my bones. I mean, I, you know, I, I I'm I'm compelled to do this. Like I, I I got to get it out, and I got to get it out now. Cause if I don't get it out now, it may not come out the next time. Like it comes out now. See, that's why sometimes you got to jump on things. You know. If y'all really moves your heart, jump on it. 
Because there's somebody that needed at the time, he puts it in your heart. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put it in your heart at that time. So if he put it in your heart, you do it. You know, you know, when he, 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 you know, he wants us to grow. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be bold. You know, he wants us to be encouraged. He doesn't want us to be fearful. He doesn't want us to, to fold and to compromise our walk with him because we can't come out of the world or we are afraid of what the world is going to say, what the world is going to think. No, he made us, he made us unique. He made, you know, he made us different, different from the world. See? I mean, he said that we are, we are a royal priesthood. That's what he said. Royal priesthood. He says we are holy nation. Peculiar people. Who should show forth the praises of him. Who brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. You know, called us a chosen generation. We are chosen generation. Chosen generation. Royal priesthood. Holy nation. Peculiar people who should show forth the praise of him who called us out of the darkness, brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Always remember that. See, these are the things you have to know. So that, you know, the enemy can't get in there. Now, you are a chosen generation. In the midst of a perverse generation, you are a chosen generation. See? In the midst of of just, I mean, degradation. We are a holy nation. Peculiar people. Yeah, we strange to the world. We ought to be peculiar, strange, odd, odd, peculiar, strange, set apart. And because of that, we show forth the praise To he who brought us out of the darkness where we was walking in the quarters to the world. And now we are in the marvelous light. Now we can see. Right. You guys, I love you all. All right. That is it. Hallelujah. 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 All right. I love you all. All right. That is it. Bye bye.